power utility ESCOM recently underwent uh, significant challenges, including uh, unexpected changes in the leadership structure and a battle to keep the lights on in various parts of the country. This has left uh, many citizens unhappy with the state of the state-owned entity and the service that it provides. But could they be turning a corner? Good evening, my name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight, we look at the current state of affairs at the Power Utility ESCOM and seek to understand what this all means for the country over the next year. Now, joining us via Zoom to kickstart the conversation is political analyst Kanyima Kubani, just to give us political perspective on what is happening at the state-owned entity ESCOM. Uh, Kanyi, thanks very much. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Tabo, and a very good evening to your viewers as well. Much appreciated. I mean, can you've seen quite a lot that's been happening there at ESCOM, you know, the current situation uh, as far as uh, leadership is concerned. We're seeing a lot of resignations, I mean, as far as board members are concerned, as well as a lot of interim and acting members. I mean, recently we saw Mpoma Kwana resigning as the board chair. We know the CEO has not been appointed there. What is going on at the utility? Thank you, Tabo. I want to start with um, Mpoma Gwana because I think that has been quite a prominent resignation. Now, recently, Paul tried to water down the, the reasons of his departure from ESCOM and saying that he doesn't want a lot of noise around um, his resignation and he was speaking at a SANIF event recently and trying to, to pass it off as an amicable um, departure between um, himself and ESCOM. However, we know that um, there have been uh, views that he's had many disagreements and was not seeing eye to eye with um, the, the, the Minister of Public uh, Enterprise, Pavin Godan, and we, we, we know that it has caused a friction and tension within the board, and that has also been cited as one of the contributing factors to, to, to his um, departure and the exodus of those uh, board members that you talk about. And of course, I think overall we can um, say that the, the leadership vacuum that is going to be caused by Mpo's departure, also in the absence of a CEO, um, is not good news for for the utility because you need to have key positions filled. You need strategic leadership. You need visionary leadership. You need um, someone that's going to implement um, the long-term energy plan um, that government uh, keeps talking about. Mpo says he's leaving the utility in a better um, condition than he found it, you know, saying something like 800 megawatts had been returned to the grid and that has been behind the decrease in um, electricity cuts. So saying that to his advantage or to his uh, point that even though he was at ESCOM for a short time, that he managed to achieve something, which then says to me he probably wasn't ready to leave just yet. You know, he doesn't sound like a mm -hmm. man who was fed up you know, of being at um, the utility. I, I, I get a sense that of course still wanted to continue, you know, maybe for the next three, four, five years. So the question is what has caused his somewhat sudden departure from ESCOM? And I think that's where the true question is. I mean, from your own view, do you think that will we ever see leadership uh, at ESCOM stabilizing anytime soon. I mean, now we are seeing the appointment of Nteto Nyati uh, there as, uh, you know, uh, will be appointed as the chairperson of the board there. Uh, he is the uh, previous CEO of Ultron and of MTN South Africa. Uh, will Is he the right man for the job? Kanye, I'm not sure if uh, you're still with us. Uh, we well, Tato is a very solid... Yeah. Yes, you can continue. You broke up there for a minute, but I can continue. Tato is a solid um, 
corporate person that's been in in in, in many uh, you know capacities of leadership like Alto and like MTN like you just said and he brings with him a wealth um, of experience especially sitting at the helm of boards and and leading from the front so in terms of um, his ability to to do the job I don't think that will be the problem I do think that if you don't uh, fix a problem at its source it will continue perpetuating itself no matter who takes over the position. And one of the biggest complaints of people who've left those positions, like Andrew Dorator, like Mpomagwana, has been that of political interference, you know? And recently, you remember that um, the ANCS chief, Gillian Balula, stated um, in a recent media briefing when um, the NEC met at, um, at Birchwood, he said that he doesn't see anything wrong with the minister having a close relationship with the board. The question is, where does one draw the line? Where does a close relationship start becoming interference? Where does a close relationship start being overstepping your mark? You know, are there clear boundaries in terms of what my jurisdiction is and in terms of what your jurisdiction is? Because the board is there to stabilize ESCOM, to bring back um, more power onto the grid and to stabilize the country's energy you know the, the the board's mandate is very different from a minister's mandate you know the, the minister is, is a cabinet appointee and is appointed by the president of this country and he also has a vested interest as a minister to ensure that state-owned enterprises are successful and we do get that however what happens when the the the, the, the people the the board that has been appointed wants to take a different direction for instance than what governments think that they should take because they are on the ground they see what's happening and they are the ones who ultimately have to be accountable to south africans so i think those those wrestles of power that power play that's really where the fight is currently and the exodus of, of people leaving the state utility should tell you how the chips are falling currently Kanye, I wish we had more time, but unfortunately you ran out of time. You know, I, I would have loved to go through, particularly as you said, that, uh, you know, there should be somewhere whereby there is that line that has been drawn between, you know, the executives there and the political um, uh, head, uh, which is uh, Private Gordon there. But uh, I think we will definitely have you on the show back uh, sometime. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure. That was uh, political analyst Kanyima Gubani helping us making sense of what is currently happening at Tescom and what this means for ordinary citizens. I want us to take a quick ad break. When we come back, we will zoom in on the current energy and electricity situation in the country. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Now, before the ad break, we started the conversation on ESCOM and got a better understanding of what is currently happening at the power utility. Let's now shift gears to the energy and electricity status and why we are seeing less load shedding. Now, joining us via Zoom to talk to us about this is Matthew Cruz, who is an energy expert. Uh, Matthew, thanks very much. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Hello, and thank you for having me. Hello to your viewers. Much appreciated. I mean, Matthew, we're seeing quite a lot of developments there at the power utility. And as far as uh, energy, uh, you know, um, uh, is concerned, I, I want us to look at, uh, you know, why we're seeing, um, you know, um, less load shedding now. Uh, uh, is, is there something positive that's happening when it, when it comes to uh, just the energy grid in its entirety? Yes, there's, uh, there's two positive developments that have taken place lately that has led to reduced load shedding. The one is that ESCOM has uh, managed to bring some of the old units back online and has managed to bring some of the big new units at Kusile Power Station back online. So the Kusile units are very big uh, and two of them equal about one and a half stages of load shedding being reduced. So that's been very, very helpful. And those two units came back, the one at the end of September, Unit 3, and then on the 16th of October, Unit 1 came back online. So those units combined um, equal one and a half stages of lotioning. And thankfully, Unit 2 will be coming back online in November, and then Unit 4 coming online in December. 
So we actually are going to see going forward <clears throat> decent generation capacity from ESCOM and reduced load shedding for the next three to six months. So that's on the one side, ESCOM kind of performing better. On the other side, there's been the reduction of the demand of electricity. And this is driven primarily from the private sector, both reducing the demand as the economic decline of uh, shrunk and, and uh, required less electricity. And then also the increase of solar PV that we've been hearing about in the news, where um, households and businesses have installed solar rooftop um, PV cells to create power for themselves. So the solar um, systems that have been installed have been creating electricity for home and business owners, and that reduces the demand in the grid as well. And uh, when we're looking at how much that has been, it's uh, now been confirmed to be four and a half thousand megawatts of solar PV that has been installed in the country. So that equals about four and a half stages of load shedding, and that's doubled over the last nine months, how much uh, solar PV has been installed. Mm. Uh, I mean, Matthew, is it really premature now to start celebrating because of these positives, or we should just, uh, you know, just hang back a bit uh, so that we can actually see, uh, you know, it coming to the fore. So both yes and no in terms of celebrating. So yes, we can celebrate that we're going to have a nice uh, load shedding free festive season, as far as I can tell, maybe one of two, two stages, not uh, stage six, thankfully. Um, but we can't celebrate for the long term because I do see it from Mod mm. onwards, loading increasing again, and this is really from I think the old decline of the old power stations, the uh, becoming more de degraded over time. This has been a trend for the last six years, where the electricity that is being able to produce from ESCOM has been decreasing, and so as a result, um, yes, we have new power units coming back online, but the old ones will slowly degrade. And then we'll see loading again in March going forward, unfortunately. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, over the years, uh, we have seen an upward trend as far as citizens installing solar panels, as you said, in their homes as a means of decreasing the personal impact that load shedding has on them. How exactly does this mm. work and how does solar assist? Great. So yeah, the company that I work with, Home Energy, we are the most trusted solar installers in the country, and we've partnered with multiple uh, large banks and, and brands to provide solar solutions. And uh, what we what we talk about when we talk about solar solutions to home and business owners is the benefits of both reducing load shedding, so you become immune to load shedding when you um, get a solar system, and uh, there's also the benefit of the financial implications and the reduction of your electricity bill by generating your own power. So one thing that's interesting about the solution of solar energy over the last year and a half is the reduction in the price of the system itself coming down to the point where it actually makes more, more sense to get your electricity from solar than from ESCOM and we've seen ESCOM increasing the electricity price year on year this year was 18.65% next year is 14% and that's just going to continue going forward so right now at the moment with our solar subscription that we've just recently launched as an example you can get a subscription for 1,600 Rand and then save about 1,500 Rand on your whole monthly electricity bill. So very minimal impacts taking place by getting a solar solution. And uh, solar simply, what takes place is uh, the sun is shining on the solar panels, you use that electricity during the day and you store some of it in your battery for use at night. And that way you become independent from ESCOM and the need for being on the grid. We don't recommend it's going off grid, however, and completely disconnected from ESCOM, because it always is good to have a lifeline there connected to ESCOM when the sun isn't shining for three or four days. Mm. I mean, just before I let you go, what is the way forward now for South Africans? And can we realistically expect load shedding, a load shedding free country? And if so, how long before we see this? Are we, are we I mean, we are seeing positives, but uh, is mm. there light at the end of the tunnel? So I would say there is light at the end of the tunnel by seeing how the private industry has and the private sector has responded to the challenge of load shedding in the country. And um, in terms of ESCOM, I don't think that they're going to find a way to generate much more electricity um, going forward over the next five years. So I actually see load shedding doubling over the next five years and definitely being still with us for the next five years because of ESCOM's inability to create power. However, on the other side, with the private sector responding, thankfully, the options that are available to consumers are vast and uh, the financial impacts are minimal 
and you can even save money by going with solar um, relative to just staying um, as is and, and doing nothing. So what I see going forward is, is hope for South Africa in the way that the private sector has come and filled the gap left by ESCOM declining um, in the country. And going forward then, um, there not being a reliance on the governments for electricity so much from the country as the private sector has stepped into the place and is now providing the electricity for the country primarily. Matthew Cruz, uh, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us. Uh, much appreciated for your insight on the current situation. They're much appreciated. Great, thank you. That's uh, Matthew Cruz there, who is an energy expert, uh, just giving us an in-depth analysis into the state of the energy and electricity in the country. With all that we have talked about, uh, you know, after the ad break, we will look into the possible solutions to, you know, uh, uh, actually to deal with this whole uh, crisis of electricity and hopefully stabilizing the power utility as from there. Do stay with us. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Molokwani. We are almost at the end of the show as we unpack the current state of affairs at ESCOM. We now shift focus to the economic impact of the situation at the power utility. Now joining us virtually to help us with this discussion is the economist Reg Nkosi, who's joining us via Zoom. Mr. Nkosi, thanks very much for taking the time. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, Ms. Ngozi, generally speaking, how impactful is the decrease of load shedding to the country's economy? I mean, we're seeing, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the national grid gaining a bit of stability there and there. But, you know, in terms of the economic impact, um, uh, you know, it's been having, we know it's been dire uh, over a period of months. Uh, how impactful is this, uh, you know, light at the end of the tunnel to the economy of this country? I like the word, the, the light at the end of the tunnel, isn't it? Uh, firstly, power is extraordinarily important in any economy. It is the driver of economies. To the extent that South Africa has been experiencing this, we have been losing jobs in manufacturing, losing jobs in all other sectors of the economy. Therefore, a recess, or as to way, the reduction in this load shedding will certainly be very positive for the economy, uh, especially uh, for the manufacturing sector, which largely depends on power. Therefore, we should see even the economy growing, jobs um, coming back, hopefully, if this is going to be sustainable. Otherwise, then we're going to go back because the industry will obviously have to wonder whether this uh, reduction in load shedding is going to be sustainable at all. Mm. I mean, the International Monetary Fund has forecasted that South Africa's economy will briefly topple that of Nigeria next year. Could this be because of the reduction of load shedding? But what else besides the factors, you know, contributing to the predicted growth of the South African economy in 2024? We know some of the contributing factors includes, you know, uh, the fortunes of Nigeria having dimmed along with the decline in production of oil. And, you know, it has been grappling with runaway inflation, including also the uh, a plunge in the value of Naira there. But, uh, you know, somewhere, somehow, is this also, you know, uh, pushing uh, the, the South Africa's GDP also to, to just move the economy to be stable a bit? I like your optimism, isn't it? Yeah, well, th th there is um, going to be an inching upwards of the economy, but quite frankly, it's not going to make any meaningful dent. The upward I'm talking about is not going to make any meaningful dent to, uh, in terms of it uh, growing beyond the Nigerian economy. Remember, the reason why Nigerian economy may eventually come down is because the Naira, the Naira is losing value tremendously. It was about 450, now it's going to jump up closer to closer to nine or 800, 800 naira to, to a dollar. I mean, that's, that's quite frankly dangerous. So it is going to be on the basis of the exchange rate vis-a-vis -vis rand dollar and naira dollar, not necessarily because South Africa is going to be improving its fortunes. But anyway, it's good news for South Africa, isn't it? But if this economy mm -hmm. was to grow sustainably, there's no doubt 
Nigeria will still come down in the in the long term. Mm. Just before I let you go, I mean, are we seeing um, the stabilization of SOEs as a contributing factor also to uh, this uh, upward trend that we're seeing in terms of uh, the economy? We know that uh, the IMF has predicted that, you know, it's just over 401 uh, uh, million dollars. Uh, uh, so I just wanted to check. Um, we've seen quite a lot in terms of process is working on getting those corridors back. Uh, you know, ESCOM is trying to fix the issues of electricity then and there. And, you know, there's still some instability when it comes to the SAA there and there. But are we seeing that also becoming somewhere, somehow a contributing factor? Regin Kossi, I'm not sure if you can see. No hear. doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt. I think uh, we should see some stability in Transnet. We should see stability. Yeah, I'm saying uh, we, 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 there's no doubt at all. We're going to see stability in Transnet, stability in ESCOM, stability in other sectors of the economy which power the economy forward. But again, I don't think we should uh, be very celebratory in that. St um, stability come through and that should a world for the economy as a whole and of course most importantly for jobs in this economy. Regin Kosi, thanks very much for taking the time. I wish we had more time, but I like what you're saying, that it's, it will be a bit premature to celebrate at this stage. But we will definitely keeping, uh, be keeping a close eye on these developments. Much appreciated for joining us this evening. There was uh, Regin Kosi. Thanks very much. There okay. was Regin Kosi, who is an economist, weighing in on the state of affairs at ESCOM and the decrease in load shedding as we are noticing lately. We hope that uh, this trend will continue as the IMF has predicted that uh, South Africa's economy will topple Nigeria. We're seeing the numbers. It's just over 401 million US dollars there. Uh, but economists are saying that, look, we might be holding that position for only a year, but some are not agreeing, are saying that South Africa is at a stable position. We hope that uh, will continue. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us an email at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za or you can simply just um, call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobol is up next with your primetime news. Good night and thank you for watching.